We continue now at the top of Daf Chav Gimel and Aleph from Maseches Psachim. This is Psachim Daf 23a. The Gemara here is trying to figure out what we do with the word Lachem by the Pasuk of Arla. The Pasuk here says, Vechisavo el Aretz, Unetatem Kolets Machol, you're going to come to your land, you'll plant your trees, Varaltem Arla, so as Pirio Shaloshonim, you have to treat the first three years of fruit like Arla. So the question is, what is the word lachem? Tanakama says it comes to include laravim, even if it's planted for the ravim. Rashi says laravim, letzorech ravim, kagon be'emtza haderech l'chol over. Let's say a tree was planted for the benefit of the public, for, it was on the road, in the middle of the road, for anyone who passes through, even that is going to be included in the halachas of Orla. Rabbi Yehuda, um, Rabbi Yehuda says, Lahotzi esanatul rav. On the contrary, the word lachem actually excludes that which is planted for the ravim. Gemara says, my time with the Tanakama. What's the reason of the Tanakama? Tichsiv, because it says, unetatem liyachid mashma, l'ravim lo mashma. The word unetatem implies for a yachid, for an individual, not for the ravim. Kosav rachmono lochem, lohavi asanatu l'ravim. So the Torah writes lochem to say, no, even if it's planted for the public, it's going to be chayiv in Arla. For Rabbi Yehuda, and what does Rabbi Yehuda say? Unetatem mashma bein l'ravim bein liyachid. On the contrary, Unetatem is mashma, whether for the public, whether for the private individual. V'lochem bein yachid bein ravim mashma. The same thing with the word lochem. That's also mashma for the individual and the public. Have a riboy riboy. That becomes an inclusion after another inclusion. And the rule is vein riboy acha riboy elalamait. Whenever you have two inclusions, a double inclusion actually serves to exclude. Rashi over here says, Unetatem liyachid mashma. Unetatem, according to the first opinion, implies for the individual. De'ain derech ravim lintoa. The idea is it's not normal for the public to be planting. Ulechol chad v'chad kamer unetatem. So the Torah is telling each individual when you plant your trees. And the Gemara continues with another question on Rabbi Avo. Again, Rabbi Avo says that any time it says you're not allowed to eat something in the Torah, it also means you're not allowed to derive benefit. Chizkia disagreed with that. So the Gemara asks, Vare truma, what about truma? The Rachmona Omar Vichol Zor Lo Yochal Kodesh. Pasuk says that a non Kohen cannot eat truma. Utsnan, we learned in a Mishnah, Ma'arvin Lenazar Beyayin, Ul Yisrael Betruma. You're allowed to set up an Erev for a Nazar using wine and for a Yisrael using truma. So apparently you're allowed to benefit from truma. So what is Rabbi Avo going to do with this? Amr Papa, so Papa answers, Shani Hasum, it's different over there. It's Yomar Kra, Trumaschem. The Torah says Trumaschem. Shalochem to hey, that's a, a reboy that means it's yours. You're allowed to get benefit. V'idoch, so what does Chizkia do with Trumaschem? Because Chizkia says, anyway, you're allowed to get benefit. Gemara says, Trumaschem dechol Yisrael ka'amar. The Pasuk simply means, it's the Truma of all of Klal Yisrael. Rashi says, V'idoch, Chizkia damar lo sochlu lo mashma hana. According to Chizkia, where it's not mashma prohibition in hana, hai Trumaschem lav lemishri hana. So, so the word Trumaschem is certainly not to coming to permit hana. Ela Trumaschem dechol Yisrael ka'amar. just means the Truma of all of Klal Yisrael. V'urchei dekra l'ashta'u yehachi. It means to say, that's the normal way for the Pasuk to speak, is to say, Trumaschem, all of your collective uh, Trumas. The Gemara continues with another question on Rabbi Avo, Vahre Nazir, what about Nazir? Again, it says by uh, Nazir, he's not allowed to eat anything from the grapes. Utnan, and it says in the Mishnah, Ma'arv and Nazir Bayayin, that you again, you're allowed to make an Erev for a Nazir with wine. Apparently, he's allowed to get benefit. Gemara says, Omar Marzutra, Marzutra answers, Shani Hosom, it's different over there. Diomar Kro Nizro, the Pasuk says the word Nizro, his Nizirus, Shelo Yeh, again, it means to say it's his, he's allowed to get benefit. Ravashi Omar Ravashi says, he offers a different answer, Kadosh Yeh, Gadil Perasar Rosho, it says that which grows from his hair is, is holy. Gidulo Kadosh means that which grows is holy. Vein Dover Acher Kadosh, nothing else is considered holy. Rashi over here says, Gidulo Seir Shelo means his hair, Asr Bahana, that's Asr Bahana. The Ton Srefa needs to be burned, Kedichsev, like it says. But nothing else is considered to be that level of holiness, so those other items are going to be permitted in Hanah. Gemara says, Does the Pasuk actually say this is holy and nothing else? It doesn't say that. Maybe Gidulo is going to be holy and other things as well. So the Gemara says, You're right. Go back to Marzutra's answer. Gemara asks another question. What about Chodosh? The Rachman Amar, the Pasuk says, Lechem v'koli v'charmel, lo soch luvat etzem hayom hazeh. Again, until you bring the Omer, you're not allowed to eat from the new grain, from the Chodosh. Utnan, but we learned in a Mishnah, Kotzer l'shachas, umachil l'behema. A person is allowed to harvest, let's say we're talking about the wheat, that's really not wheat yet, it's still grass. You can harvest that even though it's Chodosh, even before the Omer is brought. And you're also allowed to feed to your animals, even if you have chit and gemur in Rashi says, even if you have real wheat, you can benefit from it and feed it to the animals. So you see the Chodosh is mutter bahana, 
even though it says you can't eat. It's a question on Rabbi Avo. So the Gemara answers, Omer of Shmaya, of Shmaya says, Shani Hosam, it's different over there. The Yomar Kro Ketzirchem, the Pasuk says, Ketzirchem, your harvest. Ketzirchem Shalochem Yehei. Again, it belongs to you. Pasuk specifically saying, you're allowed to get Hanoah. V'idach, and what does Chizkiah do with Ketzirchem? He says, anyway, you should be allowed to get Hanoah. Again, Ketzirchem, the Chol Yisrael, Mashma. The word Ketzirchem is the normal way of the Pasuk to speak. All of Klal Yisrael's harvest. Bahare Shrotzim, the Gemara asks another question from Shrotzim, which are insects that are prohibited to eat. The Pasuk says it's Sheketsu and you cannot eat it. Now this is a question even on Chizkiah, because the language of the Pasuk is not Yochel, it's Yeochel. So again, it implies that you're not allowed to get Hanoi either. Utnan, but we learned in the Mishnah, Tzayodei Chayo V'ofos V'dogam Shenizdamnu Lohem Minim Tumeim. If you have people who are trying to capture animals and they happen to catch non-kosher animals, mutarin lemochran lenachrim, they're allowed to sell those animals to non-Jews. Again, you're allowed to derive benefit. Why are you allowed to derive benefit? Yeyochel should mean you're not allowed to derive benefit. So the Gemara says, Shani Hosim, it's different over there. Diyamar Kra, Lochem, Shalochem Yehei. Once again, the Pasuk says Lochem, it means it can belong to you and you're allowed to derive benefits. So the Gemara says, Yehachi, if so, Afilu l'chatzchila nami, you should even l'chatzchila be allowed to hunt these animals and sell them to non-Jews. It shouldn't only be, if you happen to have one, then you, then you don't have to give it away, you're allowed to sell it. So why, why is it only if I happen to catch one, then I'm allowed to sell it to a non-Jew? And the Gemara says, no, Shani Hacha, it's different over here, Damar Kro Yihiyu. The Pasuk also says, Yihiyu, V'sheketz Yihu Lachem, Yosan Yihu, that implies it should be as is, meaning you shouldn't be able to get benefit. So you have these two psukim kind of with a contradiction, so it means lichatzchila, you shouldn't be getting uh, getting any benefit from these shratzim, but if, in fact, you happen to capture one, so then you're allowed to derive benefit. Gemara says, Ulechizkiah, but still, according to Chizkiah, Lomali lemichtav lo yeyachel, umaisi lochem lemishariye. Why do you have to first say lo yeyachel, which tells you no benefit, and then bring another pasuk lochem to allow a certain kind of benefit? Lo lichtav rachmana lo yeyachel, just don't write lo yeyachel, write lo yochal like the normal way. And you don't need lochem, and automatically we know you can derive benefit. So the Gemara says, Amar lo So Chizkiah responds to you, This actually is one of the reasons why I say this. In other words, how do I know that yeyachel means a prohibition of, of having benefit? Because here you have an example where it says yeyachel, and the Pasuk has to go out of its way to allow you to get benefit. Gemara asks another question, What about chametz? Again, the Pasuk says you cannot eat using the word yeyachel. It seems to imply you're not allowed to get benefit. Betanyan, we learned in a brisa, Rabbi Yossi Haglili Omer, Rabbi Yossi Haglili says, Tamal Atzmech, it's a wonder, hey chametz asr ba'ana, how should a chametz be asr to get benefit? Call Shiva for all seven days of Pesach. In other words, Rabbi Yossi Haglili actually holds you're allowed to get benefit from chametz on Pesach. So what does he do with this? In other words, according to the Amoraim, how do they explain Rabbi Yossi Haglili's position that you're allowed to get benefit from chametz on Pesach? And the Gemara says, Shani Hasim, it's different over there, the Yom Akra, the Pasuk says, Again, the word lecha means it belongs to you. According to Rabbi Yossi Aglili, it allows you to derive benefit from chametz on Pesach. And what about the Rabbon? And what do they do with the word lecha? If it doesn't mean you're allowed to get benefit, because they hold you're not allowed to get benefit. And the Gemara says, You're not allowed to see your own chametz. You're allowed to see chametz that belongs to others or belongs to hektish. So what about the other one? Doesn't he need to learn out this halacha? What does Rabbi Yossi Aglili do? So he says, Trey lecha ksivi. It says lecha twice. So since it says lecha twice, one of them teaches you this halacha, that you're allowed to see chametz of others in Shel Gavoa. And then the other one will tell you it's permitted to get benefit. The Idach and the Rabbonin respond that you need two lechas as well. Chad benochri sheki bashto, v'chad benochri shaloki bashto. It means to include both a non-Jew who's under rulership of the Jewish territory and even a non-Jew who's not under such rulership. The Idach and Rabbi Yosei Aglili responds to Lasa Lecha Ksivi. It actually says the word Lecha three times in the Psukim in reference to Chametz. The Idach and the Rabbonin respond, no, we need that as well. Chad B'Saor V'chad B'Chametz. You need to have one by Saor and you need to have one by Chametz with and we need them both. Rashi over here says, To Lasa Lecha Ksivi lo yeira Lecha Chametz v'lo yeira Lecha Saor v'chal Gevulecha v'yod Korach Rina v'lo yeira Lecha Saor v'chal Gevulcha Shivas Yamim. So there are the three psukim where it says lecha, and Rashi further says utsrichi. We need to have a pasuk by saor and by chametz. Why? Because of saor, because if it, if it only had saor, mishum dechimutz kasha, there's a lot of fermentation. Avol chametz ema mutter. Maybe chametz is mutter because of chametz mishum deroy laachila. And if it only had chametz, chametz is something that is fit to be eaten. Avol saor, but leaven deloasi lemechli, which you're not intending on eating. 
Maybe there is no transgression, so that's why the Rabbonin say, in fact, you need all of these Pesukim. None of these Pesukim are available to permit it in Hanoa. So the Gemara now says, Let's say this issue of Rabbi Avo is Machlokas Tanoim. In other words, Rabbi Avo says, anytime it says you can't eat something, it means you can't get benefit. Really, maybe that's a Machlokas Tanoim. Pasuk says, This is talking about Chelev of Nevela, and it says it can be used for all your work. So what permission is being given here for the chalev of a nevela, the fat that belongs to a nevela? So the Gemara says, or the Brisa says, You might have thought that when it comes to chalev nevela, you can use it in the Beis HaMikdash, but you can't use it, you can't benefit for yourself. Talmud Lomar l'chol malacha. That's why it says, Yeyasa l'chol malacha. You can even derive benefit from it yourself. Divrei Rabbi Yossi Aglili. That's the opinion of Rabbi Yossi Aglili. He says this pasuk of Yeyasa l'chol malacha means to include that you can derive benefit from chalev of an avela for personal use. Rabbi Akiva Omer, Rabbi Akiva says a different drasha. Sheyacho l'malachas hediot yehei tahar. I might think that in terms of personal use, it's going to be pure, it's not going to be tame. Lamalachas gavo yehei tame, but I'll think that when it comes to hekdish, it's going to be tame. Tame lomar l'chol malacha. So the Pasuk says, l'chol malacha, that it's actually tahar in both situations. Rashi over here explains, first on Rav Yossi Aglili, sheyacho, iloa vikos of l'chol. If it didn't have this extra word, yeyasa l'chol malacha, I would have thought that the chalev of a nevela you can use in the Beis HaMikdash, for example, in Sarech Lemshoach Mimenu Oros Lemelechas Bedek Habayis. Let's say you need to use the fat in order to oil up the hides that are going to be used for the Beis HaMikdash. Yehei Mutter, that should be Mutter. Why? Because we find that chalev is allowed in the Beis HaMikdash. For example, you burn it on the Mizbeach. But if you wanted to use the chela for personal use, it would be oser. Because according to Rabbi Yossi Aglili, it already says you can't eat that chela. That includes you cannot derive benefit. So that's why l'chol malacha comes. Pasuk goes out of its way to say you could get personal benefit as well. Rabbi Akiva Omer Kalomar Lohutzrach Hakos of Lahatir. According to Rabbi Akiva, you don't need to uh, to be matir personal benefit. To have a sakadai tachlizer, there's no reason to assume it wouldn't have been. According to Rabbi Akiva, automatically it was allowed in benefit. The real point of the pasuk is to say that the chelav of the nevela is not tame like the rest of the meat. Chelav is not included in the rest of the nevela and the rest of this animal that died without shechita. It doesn't have the same tum as nevela. So, for example, if you have hide which was oiled with the chelav nevela, you can use that with uh, with pure food. And if I did not include this l'chol malacha, ha'yisi omar, I would have said, l'meleches had you, meaning l'hishtamish bo chulin, if you want to use this chelev together with chulin yehetar, for that it's going to be pure. Ava l'meleches gavoa, but if you want to use it with anything that's kachim, l'hishtamish be kachim, anything that's kachim related, yehetame, then it would be tame. And so the Gemara now elaborates on the b'raise of Rav Yossi ha'galili l'tomu l'tara lo itzrichkra, so Rabbi Yossi Aglili, what's he saying? He's saying we don't need the Pasuk anything to do with Tum and Tara. Ki itzrech kra le isru leheter. We need this extra Pasuk to tell you in terms of Hanah, to say you're allowed to get benefit. For Rabbi Akiva, and Rabbi Akiva seems to hold, Isr veheter lo tzarech kra. You don't need a Pasuk in terms of benefit. Ki itzrech kra le Tum Tara. You need the Pasuk in terms of the Dinim of Tum and Tara. And we'll continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Chav Gimel Amid Beis.